The science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke once wrote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. These technologies are commonplace to us, but even in our very modern world, there are still a small number of remote tribes living a way of life largely unchanged for thousands of years. Some of these tribes are so isolated that we know very little about them. Others are classified as uncontacted. This doesn't necessarily mean they are entirely unaware or have never encountered anybody from the outside world. All too often, they are painfully aware of our existence as their territory is invaded and their people are murdered. The uncontacted tag simply means they have no ongoing peaceful contact with the outside world. This video takes a closer look at the dwindling number of isolated and uncontacted tribes that still cling to existence in what is, all too often, a hostile world. Number 8. The Man of the Hole Deep in the Brazilian rainforest, the Man of the Hole lives one of the loneliest existences imaginable. He has survived entirely alone for more than 20 years. So far as is known, he has not spoken to another human being the entire time. The man has been monitored at a distance since 1996 by FUNAI, a branch of the Brazilian government dedicated to the protection of indigenous peoples. But even so, he remains something of an enigma. His tribe is unnamed, his language unknown, and he has only ever been captured on a couple of grainy photographs and shaky video footage. We do know that the man of the hole, who is believed to be around 60 years old, digs deep pits to capture animals and survives by hunting small prey with a bow and arrow. All attempts to communicate with the man have failed, and he has fired arrows at those attempting to do so. This aggression is entirely understandable. It's believed that the rest of his tribe were massacred by farmers in 1995, leaving the man of the hole as the last surviving member of his tribe. Number 7. The Piripkura Tribe Whatever the man of the hole's people once called themselves, sadly, they are not the only tribe facing Facing imminent extinction. The Piripkura tribe, known as the Butterfly People for the way they flit through the forest, now number no more than three. One of these, a woman called Rita, chose to abandon the nomadic lifestyle and her ancestral rainforest home. She has explained how she made her decision after her family and most of her tribe were murdered. This leaves just two men, an uncle and his nephew, known as Tamandua and Paki. Efforts have been made to locate the pair every two years in order to maintain their protection, but they are highly elusive and understandably suspicious of outsiders. They have only a few possessions, the most important of which by far is their palm bark torch. This is so essential that it had been kept continuously lit for almost 20 years. However, in 2018, the flame finally went out. Tamandua and Paki were forced to ask for help. They made contact only long enough for their torch to be relit before they once again disappeared back into the rainforest. Number 6. The Ka'a Weaver Tribe Once a numerous and settled people who produced much of their food through farming crops such as corn and sweet potatoes, the Ka'a the Kahawea tribe are now threatened with extinction. Their old way of life has been destroyed, and the last few survivors eke out a precarious nomadic existence in Brazil's Amazon rainforest. The rainforest itself is priceless, but its raw resources are worth billions. Loggers, ranchers, and miners have steadily moved in to occupy the Kahawea tribe's territory. However, in 1988, Brazil ruled that any land occupied by indigenous tribes belonged to that tribe. In some respects, this was good news, but the new laws all too often failed to afford Indian tribes any real protection and brought unintended consequences. Many Indians were simply slaughtered by the encroaching forces of civilization. If the Indians weren't there, they couldn't have any rights to the land. There are now as few as 20 to 50 members of this tribe remaining. The settlements and gardens that once grew their food have been abandoned. They now exist as hunter-gatherers, moving from place to place. This has meant changing their traditional way of life, but their mobility affords them a better opportunity to rapidly flee deeper into the forest when there's danger. Number 5. The Dani People Spanning 309,000 square miles, the island of New Guinea is the second largest island in the world. It had been discovered by Portuguese explorers in 1527, but deep in the heart of its forested interior, the Dani people had lived almost entirely undetected for centuries. That was until they were spotted by an eagle-eyed anthropologist named Richard Archbold as he flew overhead in 1938. The Dani people's way of life was based around farming, hunting, and gathering. Their tools were created from wood, stone, and bone, and each of the men wore little more than a penis gourd. Women did most of the work, such as tending crops and looking after the children. 
and pigs were the measure by which a man's wealth was measured. When Richard Archibald published his accounts of the Danny people and what he described as their paradise on Earth, it caused something of a sensation. Perhaps fortunately for the Danny people, the rest of the world would be distracted by World War II for the next several years, and they were left to their own devices for a little longer. However, hostilities eventually came to an end, and the mysterious tribe in New Guinea had not been forgotten. Missionaries descended on the islands, all of them intent on civilizing and converting the Danny people. These once isolated people have now become something of a tourist attraction. However, even now there are a handful of scattered villages where life goes on for the Danny people almost entirely untouched by the outside world. Their numbers are dwindling rapidly as their young people increasingly abandon the old way of life, and it remains to be seen how far into the 21st century their traditions can survive. Number 4. The Carubo Tribe Sidney Pozuelo is a Brazilian explorer who has probably done more than anybody else in history to discover and protect South America's most isolated tribes. He has devoted his life life to fighting for the rights of the indigenous peoples, and he is rightly considered the world's leading expert on remote Indian tribes. Making first contact can be potentially dangerous, and this was certainly the case in 1996 when he led an expedition in search of the Karibo tribe. Like many other Amazon tribes, the Karibo are suspicious of outsiders. Many of them have been killed in clashes with ranchers, loggers, and other settlers. However, the Karibo tribe, also known as the Club People in recognition of their favored weapon, fought back fiercely and killed many outsiders who trespassed on their territory. Posuelo approached with caution, easing himself in gently by leaving gifts such as axes and knives for the Corobo tribe to find. This softly, softly approach proved successful, and Pozuelo succeeded in convincing the tribe that he posed no threat. The tribe remained extremely isolated and rightfully suspicious of outsiders. What little we do know of them is largely thanks to Sidney Pozuelo. Number 3. The Iorio Totobigosoid No idea on the pronunciation of that one. Across the globe, something in the region of 31,000 square miles of forest is destroyed every single year. This works out to something roughly the size of the country of Austria. Nowhere is this deforestation happening faster than in Paraguay's Gran Chaco forest, where up to 14 million trees are cut down every single month. This rapidly diminishing ecosystem is home to South America's last contacted tribe outside of the Amazon basin. The Iorio people are made up of numerous subgroups, the most isolated of these being the Totobigosoid, which translates as the people from the land of wild pigs. For generations, this tribe lived off the forest, cultivating a few crops and hunting tortoises and boars. However, the destructive forces of civilization are drawing ever closer, hemmed in on all sides, with their ancestral lands being bulldozed to make way for cattle ranches and soy plantations. Some Toto Bigosoid have emerged from the forest to ask for help. Others have been kidnapped and forced into slavery. As the outside world closes in, it brings diseases to which the tribe have built up no immunity. In recent years, a tuberculosis epidemic has cut swaths through the community and cost many lives. Nobody can be certain how many of this tribe still survive in the depths of the Grand Chaco Forest or what the future holds for them. However, there was some good news, because in 1996, the Iorio people were granted the land rights to 10,000 hectares of the Grand Chaco Forest. However, they believe this is less than half of what may be needed to ensure the survival of their most isolated kin in the forest. The struggle of the land continues, and after a hard-fought protracted battle, the legal rights to another 18,000 hectares was secured from the government in 2019. Number 2. The Yanomami Tribe The Yanomami Tribe are another of the isolated tribes that call the Amazon rainforest home. However, their culture is rather different to most of the others. This is most apparent in that they don't have any leaders. Rather than take orders from a chief, the tribe get together to discuss any important decisions that might need to be made. The outcome is only decided when a group consensus is reached. Around 20% of the Yanomami Tribe's diet is made up of the monkeys, birds, armadillo, and deer that they hunt with bows and arrows. However, the hunter himself will never eat anything he has personally caught. It is instead shared out amongst others. While the hunting is done almost exclusively by the men, the women use their extensive knowledge of the forest to gather berries and edible insects. It's believed that they regularly make use of more than 500 different types of plants which provide medicine, body pains, dyes, poisons, and even hallucinogenic drugs. In keeping with the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, a typical working day of just four hours is enough to provide the Yanomami with everything they need to survive and thrive. So far, the Yanomami have fed better than many of South America's isolated tribes, and it's believed them are still around 30 
35,000 of them living in up to 250 scattered villages across Brazil and Venezuela. Number 1. The Sentinelese North Sentinel Island is a scrap of land covering barely more than 23 square miles. It can be found in the Bay of Bengal, just a few hundred miles from India, the world's second most heavily populated country. Despite this, North Sentinel Island is one of the most remote and mysterious places on the planet. Only a handful of outsiders have ever set foot on the island, and even fewer have made it off it alive. It is home to the Sentinelese tribe, arguably the most isolated tribe of anywhere on Earth, and somewhat paradoxically, also one of the most famous. Very little is known about the Sentinelese people. We don't even have any clear idea of how many of them there are, with estimates ranging anything between 15 to 500 individuals. Their island home is under the protection of the Indian government, which periodically attempts to take a census from the air. This is all that can be attempted. The Indian authorities have made it illegal to set foot on the island without permission, and permission to visit is almost never granted. The law is designed not to just protect the islanders, who have no natural immunity to many common diseases, but also for the safety of any prospective explorers. The Sentinelese have shown little desire to interact with the wider world and are skilled archers, and when they feel threatened, they're prepared to to defend themselves with force. In 2018, this remote tribe became headline news across the world. An American missionary named John Chow paid local fishermen to illegally transport him to the island where he intended to convert the locals to Christianity. While his actions may have been well-intentioned, he placed both himself and the Sentinelese people in terrible danger. Chow's diary entry records that he offered gifts only for a young boy to fire an arrow that struck his waterproof Bible. The young American retreated, but unfortunately failed to heed what was a very clear warning. His diary records that he determined to make another attempt to approach the people. Sadly, his determination cost him his life. The Indian authorities concluded that it would be too risky to attempt to recover his body. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel called Mega Projects. It's a new one. Please do check it out. It's linked below. And thank you for watching.